Everyone, I almost left us with the bad endings to Hive Swap Friendship Simulator Volume 1. There, see how I casually snuck in the title? Yeah. Anyways, but apparently there are four more endings we can get. Two very short bad ones. And the good ones. So let's, let's make this happen. I'm only going to read the part that I haven't read already. Um, and also you're going to notice that like, if I can split this into two episodes, if it's long enough, I'm going to tack it in the day after, like, DMN's good and bad, other bad ending would be after his normal day, and then Ardata's would be after her normal day. So, uh, stuff will not be put up in the order that I recorded it. <laughs> All right, so here's quick bad ending. Ask if you can have a bite of his hot dog. It looks amazing. Forget it. I'm leaving forever. Bye. Disrespectful. <laughs> All right, fastest ending ever. Let's go for the good ending. My throat's like a little, not scratchy, just rattly. Come on, Demon. we're making this happen. Uh, ask if listener by. All right. Last time, you may recall that I gave him a friendly pat on the back, and then everything seemed like it was great, like I made the right choice. But apparently, I'm supposed to give him a reassuring hug. You open your arms and approach him with a posture of great compassion. Furrow your brow upwardly a bit, as to say, "I know. I know how hard it is." You advance, and he leans back a little, as if caught off guard by your sympathy. Maybe you're coming on too strong, but you know there's no turning back now. You don't just throw the brakes on Im Im imminence. I can't read today. Mostly because I just woke up. Imminent heartfelt hug like this. You embrace him awkwardly, and it goes well for a moment until you realize your arm is broken, and it seizes up reflexively in pain. It jostles the hot dog in his hand, and he bobbles it. You both gasp. You try to detach from the hug so you can catch the dog. But it's already on its way to the ground. No! You attempt to save it. You stagger backwards and slip. The hot dog gets smushed under your big dumb ass. The moment it makes contact with the ground, Demon lets out a shriek. No! Ah, dude, dude, my dog! Scramble to get up in time, hoping you're not as owned as it looks. But your feet keep slipping. Or er, yeah, but you keep. Da, da, da. But your feet keep slipping and your butt keeps grinding the hot dog into the No! It's getting worse! And the carnage finally subsides. You roll over and check it out. It's completely unsalvageable. It's a gross, meaty mud mush, like the hot dog never even existed. Demon howls in agony and slumps backwards against a tree. Oh no, you fucked this up so bad. That's it, man. I've lost everything. Not sure what the point of even living in, or point is of even living anymore. You are absolutely mortified by your clumsiness and foolishness. You have a feeling you'll come or you'll be thinking about this moment for years to come. During those insecure moments when your mind seems to be looking for any excuse to make yourself cringe with self doubt and shame. Still, you can't b help but feel this guy is being a little unreasonable. It's just one hot dog. There are probably plenty more of those to come by. Er, yeah, plenty more of those to come by. For those who know where to look in this strange world. He himself... Er, yeah, he himself said he makes a habit of enjoying these. So they can't be all that uncommon. Maybe he just has an unusual psychological disorder surrounding a fixation on this particular food item? Yes, that could be it. Poor guy. This just means he needs your support as a friend all the more. You won't give up on your friends, or for that matter, people who you're trying desperately to become friends with. That just isn't who you are as a person. You have an idea. Run it by him with a sense of optimism and salesmanship. It passes behind you. There's no need to wallow in self-incrimination and guilt over the hot dog incident. Demon perks up a little. You... Want to help me get another hot dog? Absolutely. 
It can be a fun adventure, you say? Something to bond over, to bring two new buddies closer together. Okay, you don't say that out loud, but you really hope it's true. I don't know. Could be a long shot. Sometimes it could be days before I'm united with another plump treat. Glistening with perspiration. Steaming, relaxing comfortably in a soft, melt-in-your-mouth loaf. Damn. Now I really want a hot dog. I guess I don't have much choice but to take you up on your offer, do I? What do you have in mind? It's a good question. You haven't made that or made a plan yet. And frankly, you don't even know where to begin. But he's interested in spending more time with you, which is the most important thing. And I'll be honest, that that's that's our goal. We need to be friends. You'll figure something out. You saw a display of confidence is called for. Real show of leadership to improve morale. You smile, hold up your head high, tell them to follow you. You know exactly what to do. Well, not really, but you give no indication of that at all. He's definitely intrigued. Got him hooked now, you think. He's probably wondering if you hit pay dirt by a new friend with THE hot dog hookup. Dude, if I found a friend with a hot dog hookup, we'd be down. Like, yo, look at all these uh, sausages you got over there. Now we just need a friend with the bread hookup, and we're good to go. Of course, you don't have the slightest idea where to find a hot dog. You've got to admit, you're enjoying the feeling of being important and valued by a potential friend. You don't want to do anything underhanded, yet you can't help but feel you should probably milk the social gambit for all it's worth. This way, you say, as you begin marching confidently in a random direction, he obediently fo follows and begins rubbing his tummy. You begin to feel nervous almost immediately. You have absolutely no idea how this is going to pay out, or if it stands any chance of resulting in a hot dog at the end of the journey. Oh well, you figure some you'll figure something out along the way. You lead him through streets and winding through and yeah, through streets and winding through yards of strange looking houses, and he follows. He takes care to make sure you both are not seen, which could get you both in trouble apparently. Then improvise, or the improvised circuitous route appears to provoke his suspicion. Dude, are you sure you know where a dog is? Seems like maybe you're lost. Oh, absolutely. You're absolutely sure you know where to find one, you say. You're just throwing anyone off the trail who might be following you. You nod solemnly, as if that makes perfect sense. Ooh. Look, you can't have people on your hot dog trail. But you can't keep him guessing like this forever. You've got to do something. Take some bold action to keep his interest in this wiener quest. You say this way, down here. Well, good for you, virus and threat protection. Yeah, you didn't find anything, because I'm not dumb. Sorry, just arguing with my computer for a moment. You say this way, down here. This is a shortcut to the hot dog supply you're privy to. It's the mother load. Um, in the sewer? Yes, totally. It's just a short trek through the sewer. Shouldn't be more than another hour, or several, of sewer trudging. That is, if he still has the will to do what it takes to get his hands on more juicy hot dogs. Oh, hell yeah! This poor kid. You know it. After you, man. An hour later, you're so deep in the sewer, you've lost all bearings in such a direction. You could be anywhere by now. You've taken so many crazy turns. Still, you don't let up for a second that you've, you're you lost. You've made each turn with decisive conviction. He's still following you, but he's having trouble- or now he's having trouble keeping up. He's out of breath and struggling with the foul smell. Can't say you're enjoying that it much either. But you can't let on the fact that you're- what you're doing now is anything other than the most casual routine for you. Like you do this every day, just a quick jaunt through the sewer to hit up this vast, mythical trove of meat products. Okay, when you put it that way, maybe this all sounds a bit insane. Especially considering the fact that you crash landed on this planet and he knows this is like your day one here. <laughs> Still, you're in too deep to second guess yourself now. Hey, I gotta pant pant. I gotta stop and rest. Can't lie, I'm starving for a heavenly frankfurter. This might be too much for me. I don't think I'm cut out for this. 
pause and look back. He's sitting down now, slumping against a filthy sewer wall. You're intensely relieved to see you may have just won this impromptu game of sewer hot dog chicken. Look guys, if you're ever in a game of sewer hot dog chicken, you've taken some wrong turns. Clearly we have. But more importantly than that, this looks like an ideal to show some sympathy and have a bonding moment with your would-be friend. You sit next to him with your broken arm, or and with your broken arm, you put a hand on his knee in a platonic but deeply understanding way. Your arm hurts when you do this, but it's worth it. Every little gesture counts when making a new friend. I just, I kind of suck. My looseness is gone, I don't have any skills, and most people think I'm weird for liking hot dogs so much. Probably just gonna get cold. No! Not good at going on adventures or doing anything hard. All I'm good at is finding an easy meal here and there. However, I can get it. I like talking people out of their fine sausages using tricks or other ploys which end up losing me friends. Aww. It's been unthinkable that anyone would do anything nice for me or would want me to have that sweet, sweet meat I desire. At least it was unthinkable. Until now, your heart begins to race. Could it be? Is is this shitty improvised sewer escapade actually working? You can't believe it. Nobody's ever done so much or worked so hard to try to get my hands on another magnificent banger. <laughs> That's not what you should call it. Sorry for being emotional, but like, this is new for me? I don't know how to handle it. I'm, I'm just so grateful. We gotta get this man a hot dog. I'd be thrilled to call you a friend, man. Whatever you are. You're overjoyed. Unbelievable. It's almost too good to be true. What now? Such a sudden turn of good fortune. You hardly know what to do. Did you... Did you hug the guy? Last time it didn't go so well. <clears throat> Sorry, throat is... Not pleased today. Last time that didn't go so well. But this time... He's not holding a hot dog for you to clumsily defile, so maybe this is your moment. Wait. What's that? A deep, rumbling sound begins to echo through the tunnels. Oh shit! They found us! It's a drone, dude! I guess on, like, sewer duty? We gotta run! He gets up, grabs your hand, and sprints. He's a lot faster than he looks when motivated to get moving. <laughs> he turns this way and that as the rumbling gets closer. But he slips on something, and you both tumble into a river of horrific slut- Oh no. Bro, I can't swim, help! Your bad arm finds purchase on the ledge. Now it's very painful you heroically salvage your friend from the muck with the other arm. He coughs and gasps for breath. You find a nearby ladder, shove him up- Yeah, shove him upwards until he starts climbing on his own, and follow him. You burst through a lid on the floor, and you both flop out of the hole. Dressed in filth, smelling horrible, and completely exhausted. But at least you're safe, you think. Hey, man. Just want you to know, even though we didn't find the glorious treasure you were leading us to, I'm happy how it all turned out. Maybe I didn't eat hot dogs in my life as much as I thought. Maybe that's not the real treasure after all. No, hot dogs are a real treasure. It's been a journey for me, let me tell you. I'm learning so much about myself, about life, because of you. Why is my phone... I don't know that phone number. Bad day for you. My cell phone is just over there. I'm like, what do you want? Alright. His bushy hair is slicked back from his eyes due to the sludge. He's giving you a penetrating, soulful gaze of presumably pure friendship. Was it even deeper than that? Wow, this is intense. Uh, this suddenly catches your eye. Just above him. Something dangling. Lots of dangling things, actually. Come to think of it, it's really cold in here. Freezing, in fact. You finally realize, holy shit, you're in a weird alien meat locker. You're absolutely surrounded by dangling meat products, including many sausages. Thousands of them. <laughs> you begin to sob. Your sobbing soon turns into unrestrained wailing of raw catharsis. He joins you, and the tears flow freely from you both. You embrace each other and let it all out. Suddenly it hits you. Both of you. This is by far the happiest day of your life. <gasps> Meet heaven! We got it! <laughs> this is beautiful. Oh my goodness, I almost want that as my wallpaper right now. 
We did it, team. Um, you know what? I'm just gonna. This episode will either go long or be a bit short. You are Donna. What up? Uh, it sounds fine, I guess. The fuck out of my face and never come back. Rejection! <laughs> Alright, fast ascending. You gotta be 100% with her. Alright. Now we gotta skip to the next one. Alright, we're gonna get the hell out of here. First you clear your thoughts and try to think innocent things. Fluffy clouds in the sky, ironing some clothes. A winning touchdown passed from the sports. Our daughter's long black hair is spilling over her cloak. Her wait. These are not innocent thoughts. Shut it down. Shut it down. It's no time for thinking. You have to act. You hurl the screwdriver at her and run. She calmly lifts a hand towards one of the kids in the cages. The kid tenses up and lifts a hand in the direction of the screwdriver. Screwdriver driver, blah, 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 freezes midair, right in front of our daughter's head. You run up the stairs. She twitches a finger, and the cage kid does a full body spasm. The screwdriver goes sailing towards you. It stabs you deep in your leg, and you buckle over, tumbling backwards down the stairs. You're a crumbling heap at the bottom of the stairs, bleeding, and you think your arm is broken in two places now. That didn't seem very friendly to me. Luckily for you, I'm determined to make relationships work. Even ones with people who flee simple furniture assembly products. Look, man... If it's Ikea furniture, that's... That's if they were, like, trying to pull out your own tooth. It's difficult. She stands over you and attempts to pull the screwdriver out of your leg. Your entire body locks up. You can't move. She holds an outstretched hand just above you. You shouldn't try to move yet. You certainly shouldn't try to pull out that screwdriver. You'll get blood everywhere. Oh, we were trying to pull it out. To my three little eyes, under the present conditions, it seems to me that only one of us should attempt walking up these stairs. You feel relieved. Perhaps she has some alien means of levitating you up the stairs? Wait, no. Your body is tensing up again. It's moving without your permission. <laughs> you get to your feet without taking the screwdriver out. Wow, that hurts! What is she making- wait, what? She can't be. Uh... We got close to your face, ma'am. You use both of your arms and all of your strength to pick her up entirely. Pain from your arm is excruciating. Arms with broken bones are not meant for heavy lifting. The additional weight on your wounded leg isn't great either. You hold her as a groom would hold a bride. She wraps her arms around your neck to hang on to you in whatever strikes you as overly... F blah, blah, blah. To hang on to you in what strikes you as an overly familiar manner. I'm going to try a drink again because I... I can hear the rattly. She looks you directly in the eyes and grins. This is better. Now onward and upward, new friends. <laughs> your legs begin to operate without your consent. Okay, so I guess like in person, maybe Blues have more control. Or she's better than Friska. You heard me. I said it. Your legs begin to operate under or without your consent. They wobble and struggle under the weight. The wound throbs. You lumber back up the long flight of stairs, carrying her all the way. Take her back to the kitchen and set her down in a chair seated at the table. You didn't think I'd forget about dinner time, did you? Let's put your unfriendly behavior behind us. It's a good thing for you that I'm benevolent enough to overlook disgusting acts of betrayal. You may have noticed I keep several friends in my hive who I have similarly forgiven. Consider the transgression blood beneath the abattoir? You inhale. Now that she mentions it, yes, you are hungry. Maybe a warm will meal will lift your spirits and get this curiosity for turbulent friendship back on track. Maybe you'll even get a chance to pull the screwdriver out of your leg. Pull out a chair and tend to sit down, but your legs lock up, and then you stand again. Apparently, this is not the right thing to do. Oh, but why are you sitting? There's cooking to be done. You stagger mechanically over to the fridge and open it. You pull out a large hawk of some sort of alien mystery meat and put it on the counter. 
With your broken arm, you reach in anguish for a dangling meat cleaver. You chop the hawk, wincing with each swing of the cleaver. You place the sliced meat in a frying pan, sear it lightly, and serve it on a plate very rare, just the way your new friend likes it. You didn't know that was the way she likes it, but you surmise this is what she prefers in a piece of meat. <laughs> just, I can't read today. Surmise this is what she prefers in a piece of meat, since technically she is the one doing the cooking. You put it on the table in front of her, along with a fork and knife beside it. Your muscles relax as you apparently are allowed to control your own body again. She does nothing except for look at you with a pleased expression. You eye the meat in front of her, then the meat on the counter, and the chair on the other side of the table. What should you do? Prepare a plate for yourself? Is this what she wants you to do? Well, it looks like you're confused. Isn't it obvious what to do next under your own bio er, vol volition? I always want to say violation, and that's not a word. A good friend would know what to do. In fact, I don't think a good friend would take nearly as long to decide what the right thing to do, do next is. It actually seems to me that a very rude friend would hesitate for as long as you were hesitating. Or perhaps someone who is not a friend at all. You begin to sweat again. You clearly don't have much time to make up your mind. If you wait for even a few seconds longer, you will probably be guilty of being a bad friend. Maybe even a dreadful one. Da 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 da. Throat? Why? Alright, I'm out of water. It has to last us the rest of the scene. It's not the type of person you think you are. What will you do? I'm so glad there was only one option. Because... <laughs> We would have had to run through again. Also, I just noticed that her things are troll horns. This feels like the only obvious thing to do. She is looking at you quite expectantly. You reach up for the fork with your good arm and go for the knife with the other. Ow. Can't do it. Your arm is much less serviceable than the muscles, or when the muscles are not being forced via psychic override to disregard the pain response. Nevertheless, she looks at you patiently and smiles. That's nice of her, you think. Not to be mad about it. Feel like you're growing closer to your new friend by the minute. Put the fork down, then pick out the knife with your good arm. You cut the meat into several pieces with a careful sawing motion. You put the knife down and pick up the fork and stab a piece. You put it close to her mouth. She seems pleased. Very good. Nice technique. Full sized morsels, too. She chews the meat with excellent form. She has very good table manners, you think? When she finishes the pieces, you slice off some more and continue. The meat looks very good. Your mouth is watering, but she doesn't offer any. Oh well. When it's the right time for you to eat too, you're sure she will let you know. <laughs> the meal is finished. There is no more meat, except for a few pieces of unchewable gristle. But you do not try to feed her. That would be thoughtless. Very bad service. She reclines and steeples her fingers, looking quite pleased with how the evening has gone so far. <laughs> you aren't sure why she's laughing. Did you do something funny? Ha <laughs> ha! Oh my! Ha ha! What a fool! You point to yourself, wondering if she's referring to you. You don't know what you've done that was foolish. If so, you're still not sure what she finds to amusing. Literally everything. Ha ha! Ha ha! Ha ha! Oh no! She pauses from her laughter for a minute or two, and slowly begins to frown. A faint blue tear rolls down her cheek from her bottom eye. Truth is, I don't even know why I'm laughing. This isn't very funny, what's happening here. It was a good dinner. You did a good job, whoever you are. She puts her face in both of her hands and sobs quietly. You have no idea what to do about this. You stand there, still holding the fork, feeling a bit useless. There's a lot of pressure, you know. Being so respected and admired from your high status in this world. I didn't ask for this, to be so superior to so many. Much is expected of you, much is presumed about what your personality will be before you even develop one. You work hard and build a brand based on what you think people assume you should be like. Sometimes I wonder, am I even that good at being sinister? Could I be more sinister if I tried harder? Maybe this is not my true calling after all. You begin to offer words of sympathy. This all seems heartbreaking to you. Your poor new friend... This all seems heartbreaking to you. Your poor new friend. 
Your jaw muscularly contracts and your mouth shuts involuntarily. Guess it's not your turn to speak yet. Okay, that works for you. You like to be a good listener to your friends. What would happen if I changed my brand? If I stopped being so sinister online? My friends and followers will deride and reject me. My superiors will eat me alive. I show weakness if I scale back on my bloodthirsty content. Will I incur the scorn of a wise-ass clown with a hundred million subscribers? Will I be in this in a cage someday, listening like a fucking fool or listening to a fucking fool on his horn for likes? No, I must persist. How lonely it is to know this is all I can do. Till the day I leave this planet. I have no material or sensory comfort left for me here. Until I can get on a ship and fly away, pain is my only solace. Your hand holding the fork grips it tighter. You're horrified to realize what it's in the process of doing. Wait. Bring it down hard on her hand, which is placed flat on the table. It doesn't flinch or react in any way. Three trails of cerulean blood flow from the tiny lines where they pierce your skin. That wasn't friendly, you think, but then you weren't the one who did it, were you? You're so confused. My subscribers are not real friends. They adore me only for my sinister content, the show I provide, my wicked, infectious laughter. I get jealous of them sometimes because they get to watch my content. It must be thrilling, I think, but maybe... I'm just jealous of them because they get to be people who aren't me. It's fucking deep, I know. I apo er, Apologies if you cannot relate. She pulls the fork out of her hand and lays it gently on the plate of gristle you didn't feed her. The people downstairs in their cages aren't my friends either. They act like they're my friends, though, and sometimes I even believe it. But they don't really want to be friends with me. Nobody does. The only person who has ever really wanted to be my friend has even tried to be, is you? Clear your throat and point to yourself innocently. That's it, I've decided. You have passed the test. You will become my friend, officially. As such, I think a reward is in order. You're overjoyed! Your heart starts racing, you can't believe it! A new, real friend! We don't have much time to enjoy this achievement. Your body is doing something again. You bend down in a strained motion and pick up the plate and fork. You position the plate over your wide open mouth and scrape in the remaining gristle and begin chewing. It's virtually inedible. Your mouth humors the act of chewing for two seconds, and you swallow all of it whole in one painful go- Oh no! <laughs> Tastes like friendship! <laughs> oh, that's so awful! <laughs> Don't eat the gristle! All right, we got them both. Um, I fit this in a tiny little episode, so this will just be up after the other two. All right.